Today we're going to bond the lower arch with incognito light appliance. What you can see here is a so-called clear precision tray. This is a digitally made tray which makes me able to position the brackets completely accurately on the tooth surface. And this is what we're going to show you now, the bonding protocol for incognito light. Before we can start, I have to make sure that the tray fits really well in the lower arch. The blue line indicates you the midline of a lower arch. So position the tray and as you can see, it's fully seated in the lower arch and perfectly seated. A really a beauty about this tray is you can also double check if the contacts of the bracket base touches the surface of the teeth. So always make sure that the tray fits before you bond up the case. After removing the tray, you have to clean the lingual surfaces. Wendy, would you pass me a cotton pellet and some acetone, please? For cleaning the lingual surfaces, we use acetone and a cotton pellet. Here we go. After cleaning the surfaces, we will try them. Okay, that's it. I always place the tray in front of me so that I have always the tray in my head. So what we do now is we will insert the tri-tips in her mouth. And place the NOLA tri-field system. The NOLA tri-field system is available in two different sizes. This one is an adult size but it's also available in red, which is a kid's size. So you can also use a kid's size one for a certain patient with, with limited access to the mouth. Now you have clear visibility of her lower arch. To protect her tongue during the whole bonding process, it is really important to insert that tongue shield. Just make sure that it sits really well in the back of her mouth. Now we have clear visibility of the area where we want to bond the brackets, the lower arch. Before you bond every case, you have to make sure that the patient sees a hygienist at least one week before the bonding appointment. Before we bond up every case, it's really important to check the lingual surfaces if they are clean. What I do with my patients, I make sure that they see a hygienist at least one week before our bond up. This gives me the opportunity to have a really nice bonding procedure which has no rebonds. So always make sure the two surfaces are really clean. When you've done that and you've checked the fit of the tray, we got, will etch the lingual surfaces. To check which lingual surfaces you want to bond, always look at the tray, what type of bracket design you have chosen for your appliance. So to verify which two surfaces you need to etch. You have also the opportunity to print out the bracket design on a piece of paper and lie it next to you to again double check the design of the bracket and where you need to bond. This is how we're going to bond the lingual surfaces. You should etch every surface for 30 seconds. 
why you etch the surfaces if you want to be more efficient you have the option to already apply the, the bonding in the bracket base I will show you that in a second after 30 seconds of applying the etching on the two surface you will remove the etching and rinse solely with water After rinsing with water, you have to dry the surfaces. I always start on the buckle to make sure all the saliva disappears. And then you will dry the lingual surfaces. Having done so, you have to make sure that you see a clear white etching pattern. When you, you verified all the surfaces have been etched properly, it's, it's time to put the bonding on the tray. We will bond with Relay X Unizem, which is for me the best bonding material on the market at the moment. It's dual curing. So you have either two and a half minutes working time until it cures chemically or you can use your curing light to cure it. What we're going to do is now we will apply the bonding on the bracket base. There's no rush but you have to make sure that you use enough material but also make sure you don't use too much material as the excess of bonding will go in your interapproximately spaces. I take the tray and put it in the patient's mouth. Verify the fit, push it down, let it settle and ask your nurse to cure it on the anterior labial surfaces first. you will cure every single angle of the packet for at least three seconds. After the initial curing, you have the time to go to the premolar area and cure it there as well. So three seconds for every single tooth from each angle. Always make sure that you cure from the labial side to the lingual side as we have a metal bracket and it's impossible to cure through the metal. After you've started curing the bonding, you will be able to remove the hard tray of the clear position tray, which you can see here. This is the outer hard shell. So you give it away. After having done this, I cure again and make sure that I also cover other surfaces from the lingual side. If you have any crowns, any metal crowns where you have to bond on, please make sure that you stick to the working time of two and a half minutes because the light won't be able to access the bonding material so it won't be able to be cured via the light. So always double check what kind of two surfaces you will bond on. Having done that, the bonding procedure is more or less finished and I can remove the NOLA tri-field system, which makes it more comfortable for the patient now. Having done that, the clear position tray is in place 
and I can remove it. After having cured every single bracket for at least three seconds from each side, we have to remove the tray. This is also a very important part of the treatment as, especially when you have a lot of crowding, you can debond a bracket while removing the tray. So what you have to understand is the design of the bracket. You have an incisal wing and a gingival hook. This is a retention surface. So you have to make sure that you lift the tray from the buccal surface to the lingual surface off and from the distal to the anterior, to the mesial. So you go from the buccal to the lingual in the back. What I do then is I lift the anterior brackets from the labial surfaces off. After having done that, I have to push towards the lingual surfaces down to remove the tray. And that you do on both sides. You will hear some clicking noises and after removing the tray, all brackets are perfectly positioned. After having bonded all the packets on the teeth, we have to make sure to remove all the excess on the surfaces. As you can see here, there's hardly any excess of glue. I always go through the interproximately area just to double check that we have no glue in the contact area. As every glue in there will prevent the teeth from moving. Having done that, we have to make sure that all the contact points are clear. Which is the case. In most cases, there's a need to do some interproximal reduction. If there's a need to do so, it will be mentioned on the template of the individual arch. As you can see here, there's no sign of stripping, which means there's no need for me to do any kind of stripping on her teeth. But if you do so, there are certain instruments available which will help you to do the slicing. This is a burr I use on nearly every patient if I need to do some IPR, it's called. After doing the IPR, you have to polish the surfaces with a softlex disc attached on that mandrel. Also, a very crucial part of my treatment is now to check if we have any pre-contacts while biting together. So please ask your patient to bite together on the occlusion paper. As you can see now, what I also expect is no contact on the bracket itself.